In this video, we're going to talk about the echo features and the array features in ANOVA's Mach 3 program. So let's start with the echo. I'm going to open a new project here. And um, there's some shapes that are in your pattern library, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, called Z shapes that are um, enclosed spaces that you can use for the echo feature. So let me go ahead and bring on this crescent shape. And I'll take it down a little bit in size and we'll explore some things about the echo menu. It's really pretty simple. You've got two choices, ripple and spiral. And ripple means that there will be individual shapes drawn around this that are not connected. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to do an outside ripple and let's do it at 0.25 of an inch. And I'm gonna have five repeats. So if I click echo, you can see that it rounded the corners around the sides because that's what we had uh, selected and it looks pretty good but they would sew individually you'd have a tie off between each one of these different shapes and so that's not always an ideal situation and so let's try to repeat that using um, the miter option and watch the corners on that so it squared these off a little bit which also might not be ideal so let's try the square option and see what we get so same thing, it looks like using the, the rounded option would be the best choice on that particular pattern. But play around with those to see what gives you the best effect. But in all of these, because they are ripples, they're individual shapes, you're going to have tie-offs between every single echo. So control Z to undo that. Let's try the spiral. And I'm going to leave the settings at the same. And let's go ahead and try a miter to start with and say echo. It's still squaring off those corners just because of the nature of the shape. Um, but this outer echo would sew as one. You can see where it starts really tight in here, comes around and then starts increasing the distance. So it's all one shape. Let's repeat that with a round. And so you can see there's one start and one stop on the echo. You also have the, the ability to um, either choose to sew the original outline or to DQ that or delete it if you didn't want it to sew. So um, we'll go ahead and line that back up. This is an example of what can happen if your start and end aren't really closely aligned. Um, if you were tracing around an applique, for instance, maybe using the draw with a line and you didn't get those completely on top of each other, when you go to um, do the echo, let's go. I'm gonna have it here at Ripple. I'm gonna leave it on that and let's say round. And I will choose the outside and say echo. But you can see it did both the outside and the inside because it it has a problem knowing where to start and stop with these spaces. It it does it's confused. So when you do trace applique, like if you're using a pushpin boundary or something, you would want to select close when done. So those starts and ends on the shape that you're you're creating are completely enclosed and you don't get this sort of weird effect where you end up with too many echoes. This is kind of fun. We'll play around with the spiral tool using this circle from the um, pattern library. And I'm going to go to my echo tool and choose spiral. And I think I'll increase it to one inch. And let's do six. And I'll choose the round. I, it, of course it would be round, but I'll choose that anyway. So we'll go ahead and create that. So you can see it created a nice spiral shape. And you can take this and do other things with it. So if I copy this and get another shape. I'm actually on one sh one of these copies. I'm going to um, try to reverse sew. So now that one starts on the outside, goes to the inside, and the other starts on the inside and goes to the outside. So I'm going to actually resize that having my maintain ratio on. So I'll shrink it down a little bit and then I'll align them to where these two points in the center are completely aligned. And you can use your arrow keys, remember, to nudge it. And so let's do that. And then I'll select them both and go to my group tool and say link and accept. So that's now one pattern. So that can be kind of fun behind 
an applique shape um, if you're using the the mask functions. So a useful little coil that starts in the inside and then comes back and finishes in the inside. You could change it too so that it started on the outside. Let's take this one step further using a, our Z square. I just brought it on and enlarged it to be close to what that coil size is. And what I would do is probably save this as a pattern by going to File, Save Pattern. And this will put it in your library. Um, so let's call that um, double coil. And now I can pull it up if I want to do other things with it. But I've brought out my Z square, and I'm just going to place that over there and kind of eyeball it, try to center it somewhat close. And let's use the Z square as a mask. So I'll go to my mask tool and say build and it turns it blue i want to click on the inside of that mask turn it pink and then select the pattern i want to mask and say um, continuous sew and i want to apply the mask to the outside i want to get rid of what is on the outside of the square and say accept and so now i've got kind of a cool pattern that you could use around applique that would sew pretty much continuously Now this might um, have some overstitching, so if you want to see how it's actually going to stitch, you have to have a sew zone set up and the pattern has to fit within your sew zone. I would go to the sew menu down here and click on your sew options and you can actually preview this. So I am going to go ahead and say start and it will show me how that's gonna stitch out. So it looks good so far. Then it kind of fills in the corners as it works its way out. There's going to be some doubling over there. Then it will finish it and then curl back inside. So you can go back and make some edits if you don't like how this is stitching or if you're concerned about too many of those areas that are going to overstitch. Let's learn some things about the array tool. Um, or the wreath tool that it's called in this. So it's very similar to some other programs, other graphics programs, but I'm gonna start by going to my settings and making sure my snap to grid is on. And this isn't really important for this pattern, but um, just to kind of show you that. And then I'm gonna to go to the draw menu and choose mouse and line down here and begin. And I'm gonna just pick a couple of points and draw a long V shape. So when I'm done, I right click with my mouse and that stops using that tool. So now I have that done. Go back to your settings now and check snap to grid off. I'll go ahead and take this down in size a little bit and uh, you could choose to narrow it up, whatever you wanna do to play around with this. And then let's go to our wreath tool. So I've put in uh, 18 repeats at 10 degree increments. You can just pick different things and see how they work out. And I'm going to say change rotation point because I want to see where this gray spot is. So let's um, you can see that if you want to move it around it's going to affect where the uh, pattern rotates. But I'm going to leave it right there at that point and say preview. And you can see that it, it builds this big array or wreath. And so let's go ahead and say accept on that. So because of the way I drew this and the fact that I chose link patterns, you can see that it's going to go up to the center and then back out to the outside. And it's actually going to connect to the next array. So that's going to just save us some time on the next step. Let me go ahead and transform and bring that down. And let's use our Z-square again to build another pattern that could be used around applique. I can actually take the center of the Z-square and line it up, or you can use the um, align tools. And let's go over that real quick. Let's explore another way to align these two using the align function. So I'm going to select that. and I'm going to choose mouse and I'm going to actually choose point. You can see that my choices down here change, but for this particular 
thing, let's choose point, and I'll zoom in here and click, and you'll see a small circle um, up here. And I'm going to line that up with the center and say accept. And that defines the point that I want to align other shapes to. So now if I come out and click on my square, I have center selected down here for what I want to use to align. If I click on the square, it snapped it inside that wreath, aligning the two center points. So I'll say accept. So let's go back now and use the mask function to create another pattern that could go behind applique. So I want to select the square function and say build, turns it that bluish purple, and then I will select it again to turn it pink, and then the pattern that I want to trim, and I want to trim outside, continuous sew, and say accept. So that just gave me a new pattern that I can use behind appliques that is going to sew very efficiently. So I'll pull that out. You can see it's one continuous line. And let's do that in an applique. Let's delete this. So if I had a, um, let's pick this star. What, what I would do first is go ahead and save this pattern. So select it, go up to save pattern, and let's say um, straight line array or wreath. So I'll have it to use on other blocks. So I'll bring in my star here. And if this was an applique in a block, I could put the, the center point wherever I wanted to. But let's go ahead and kind of line it up. And I will choose my star, go to my mask, say build. Click on it again to make it pink. Click on this outer part. And let's mask the inside in this situation except so that that's going to sew up to the shape come over here come down so you get very little over stitching around the applique shape let me see if i can show you that on the the sew menu so it if you're not perfectly aligned on your original um, boundary that you've created, the pushpin boundary, then it won't show as much. And this is a little bit buggy. It kind of jumps to different points, but when it actually stitches out, it stitches out fine. Let's play around and create another pattern. I'm going to go into the draw menu and come down and choose arc. Oh, actually, I want to snap to grid on and begin and zoom in here and draw kind of a elongated arc. Remember that first click is the first part of your arc, the second click is the last part, and the third is the peak of the curve. So I'm going to click there, and now I'm going to come back down, return here, and click again, and then place this curve. So I've just created a petal shape. Again, right click to get out of that tool, and we're going to use that in the wreath function. So I will now go over to the wreath, and I'm going to leave that same same choices, and check the rotation point. And I'm going to click down here. And as soon as I preview it, you can see that I get this array, kind of a flower array. So that becomes one pattern. All the starts and starts, starts and stops are right in the middle. It's going to sew continuously because I had link pattern selected. So that would be another pattern you could save and use behind an applique or on its own. So start thinking about this tool as kind of the adult version of a, um, what was it, Spirograph set that we had when we were kids. And so you can just get endless variations on patterns. Let me go back to the draw menu. We'll do one more. And I'm going to choose arc. And again, start out here. I don't have my snaps on. It doesn't really matter. Oop, begin. And just draw a long arc. Come back up and put the top of my curve and say done. And then I'm going to go to the transform to get out of the draw function and copy that. And then put them kind of close together and use my rotation tool here to match those. Before I do that, let's take one of them and reverse sew, kind of like we did before. Oop. 
So now let's match those up. And you could even use Snap to end if you wanted to. So I'm going to select both of them and say Join, or to say Link in the Group menu. So they're now one shape. And so let's play with that using the wreath. So try different amounts here. I think I'm going to leave it the same just for grins. So you can see that my rotation point can change anywhere that I want on it and try different things. But let's go ahead and I'm going to leave it at the end so you can get a really neat kind of curved option on that. Say accept, which would be great on behind an applique using the tools that we've already explored. But look at the dimension that you get in that. So play around with basic shapes. There's lots in your pattern library. Um, this one, for instance, makes really neat arrays. They, the more simple they are, the, the better they'll stitch. But you can literally create thousands of patterns very easily. Um, hope you enjoyed this. And let us know what you'd like to see on the next one.